Trail Warriors, first day of spring today, full moon, the Fed, so we have a trifecta working today. Everyone doing okay? So uh, initially I wanna show the crude. Uh, we'll know uh, basically, I think a lot's gonna have to do with the dollar if there's still one more shot up towards a line. Fell short of it, but you know, on a bigger picture, it was close enough for government work. That's why I usually probe something like this, but it could still just be an ABC with one more shot up. So uh, trying to be patient, you know, that's why uh, pros probe the market and protect because you never know when the real turn's going to happen. So you could have uh, you know a bias in the market for something bottoming or topping and get false starts. Uh, and no one ever knows when they're putting on a position if it's just going to be good for a scalp or it's going to be good for a swing or position trade. So you probe, you take partial profits, you protect, you tighten up stops to break even. And uh, you can even make money when you're wrong the market uh, before the turn if you have that kind of mentality. <clears throat> so in honor of it being the, hi, Paul, how are you? Ping pong. Uh, don't hit any into the net today. So I thought in honor of spring, I might do this. It's now or never. You should subscribe. Join our trading family so you'll know how tomorrow will be too late it's now or never the markets won't wait who just signed up give me a why if you just signed up <laughs> All right. So, you know, my philosophy is red events, trim down your positions. Um, you know, stops are meaningless for a while. So uh, the whole market's expecting some type of mm, dovish type of Fed. So the risk is really if they don't give the doves enough. And if they give the doves plenty, a lot of it might all already be priced in. So uh, just guessing, I'm thinking that uh, uh, even though we had a pullback in the S&Ps yesterday, maybe there's a chance that we could uh, retest it. I know some uh, people that I follow were looking for 28.45. I've seen people calling 28.78. And uh, this four hour chart confirmed in the S&P. So uh, we'll see what happens if we get one more high. Uh, NASDAQ, similar situation. Uh, very interesting. Remember earlier in the week, I talked about uh, a line that I had in the gold that uh, had come into play a few different times. Uh, was talking about uh, the break here, the back test here. Had another back test here, and it's holding the moving average. If gold gets back through this line this time with confluence on the moving average of 1310, uh, there's a pretty good possibility there's at least 1322 in it, 1320. So if you're a gold bear, you're making your stand here, okay? If uh, you're a gold bull, this is where you want to see the market close above. So uh, that's my look in gold. Really uh, not a lot that I wanna do before the Fed, uh, looking to react to it. Um, in fact, Ben Maldonado's in the house and uh, it was a week ago last Monday, um, I was in bearish ETFs on the queues and Ben came out with a call that uh, both the market and the crude had bottomed and they were spot on. So uh, how about that guys, that great traders come to hang out in face and, uh, you know, he's not being interviewed today. I think it's because he likes the content. And uh, it's probably uh, because he believes in masterminding, which is what we do 
uh, every day here in face for free and all day long in our members chat. So, uh, you know, uh, take Elvis's song, It's Now or Never, because that's all we have anyway. You could say, well, maybe down the road. Well, you know, who knows what's down the road? Who knows? Uh, you let go of what happened yesterday. Now is the key word. Next is the key word for traders. So now and next become part of our trading family here at Forex Analytics. I guarantee you, you won't regret it. I haven't. I'm looking at our you know, two year anniversary coming up in a week or so. And um, people that have followed me for a decade or so have commented that uh, my hit rate has gone up. And uh, my hit rate has gone up because of the company I keep every day. So face is the tip of the iceberg and uh, you want to immerse yourself uh, with these pros. Also, you want to uh, go to talk to our sponsor, uh, Jason and Trent, so that you could learn about a reimbursement program or get a, a check every month. So you just go to that, and uh, these guys are not going. You're not going to go through a million phone prompts and they're a broker of brokers so uh, no law against having more than one account in fact I think it's a good idea because you don't know if you have a good racehorse until you run it against another so I think you could say the same thing about brokers to suit your needs so give Trent Justin a call at Forest Park FX and uh, wondering what Blake Blake went to the spring training game uh, to see, I think the Padres were there. Uh, it, where was it, Blake? Uh, in Mesa? I know there are so many teams that have spring training out there. Yeah, it was uh, as that talking uh, uh, talking stick, which is um, uh, uh, what's the name of the field? Um, oh. Yeah, I mean, to I guess it's Talking Stick Field. Um, okay. Salt River Where's Field. It? Sorry, sorry. Oh, Salt, yeah. Salt River Fields. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, That's it's a, it's a real, it's a, it's yeah, it's a nice complex. It's a, it, um, it, it's a lot of fun. Our um, next door neighbor and very good friend, she was singing the uh, national anthem. So, yeah. uh, so we're like, oh, you know, it'd be a good night to take the kids out. I mean, the weather was perfect. Yeah, you, you know. got to take advantage of that now, bro. Yeah, we had some we had some great seats. We um, they were so inexpensive. I mean, we were right almost right behind home plate and you know just a couple rows back and um uh, the the tickets were very very inexpensive definitely not uh not not regular season uh ticket prices it, it's so fun spring training games are are, are great just because the weather's so awesome so i know you're not uh, every once in a while you put the pedal to the metal um for you know i've heard you talk about this when you really have something sometimes it's uh one trade, uh, one trend that you latch on to and press when it's working for you. Any potential home run balls that you're focused on going into the Fed here today, buddy? Well, I, you know, <laughs> I'm, a, <laughs> I got stopped out of a big, big position yesterday. I was uh, long the dollar uh, Canadian. It uh, took me out, um, you know, as it stopped me out below the support here. And it's very frustrating because we're, we're right back up again. And it was t a total stop run, which is pretty indicative of, you know, um, you know, this type of market, you know, you you just, you know, I got stopped out and popped right back up. It's so frustrating. And I didn't, I didn't chase it back higher yesterday, which I could have, but I, you know, decided to, to take it easy. Um, you know, being the, the market is so, um, you know, so, so, uh, it, it's very illiquid and there's not a lot of great trends. So, okay. Uh, it's hard to find something like that to latch onto right now. Uh, you know, someone tweeted me, I'm going to interview a mystery trader and, you know, he's forecasting, uh, sideways currency action for the first half of the year. I wasn't happy to hear that. Hope he's wrong, but well, he's uh, it could be frustrating for currency traders the first half. Yeah. Hey, by the way, the cable's under some pressure here. Um, um yeah, and and so and look at the pounds, yeah. you know, starting to come down a little bit. So one of the one of the things that uh, and and May just uh, Theresa May is seeking an extension for Brexit. So that's uh, and and watch the euro pound here. The euro pound, you know, we've had all this time to go down, 
yeah. and uh, below 86. I, I played it on the short side. Um, you milked it, man. I I did. I, I I you know I played it a couple of different times, but it it's had all the time in the world to break down, and we haven't. And so, um, you know, we might we could we could start squeezing here in the in the euro pound. We we get above like you know 86, 50, um, and that 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 could really start squeezing. I think Andre, uh, who does our harmonics, Blake, uh, a week or so ago, you know, he was looking more towards the long side in Euro Pound, and his harmonic patterns were starting to shape up. So I don't know if he has a pattern in play on it, but uh, I don't think he, so. Yeah. Okay. All right, but he was talking about a potential low here, and then a pretty good move. So just something yeah. I remembered. So we we um, you know, I. Again, I'll, I'll go to the weekly chart here. Let me let me get rid of this arrow because the arrows kind of it, these arrows don't stay. Um, so you know, if you look that the you know the pound had this ability to break down, we had a big right. double top, and the failure to break down um, could lead us to a nice little squeeze. I, you know, and I I've been you who, know who would have known with a weekly close like that, like. Yeah, yeah. Well, week, the, you know what I mean? Brexit, you know, it's, it's yeah. Brexit. So, you know, obviously anything can happen and, you know, things are happening right now that people don't really, you know, you're like, you, you get, you know, whiplash back and forth, um, thinking one thing's going to happen, then, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still getting used to waking up early. And plus, I did get to bed kind of late last night for me. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that yawn and just came out of nowhere. Uh, so I, I would I would be real careful if we if we start you know getting above like this 8650. But yeah, with that weekly candle, it looked pretty bearish, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, here we are, uh, you know, just just reversing. Uh, hold on, May uh, May time for Parliament to face consequences of decision. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, that's uh, that's never positive means uh you know consequences of decision well you know a hard brexit might actually be you know the way we go and then that would be not be good for risk or anything uh, for that matter but um let's talk a little bit about the euro dollar because the euro dollar is you know it's catching a bit we're, we're real close to the the 78 percent retracement we're actually probing a little bit of this downtrend line here uh and this is ahead of the ahead of the ahead of the fed now dale asked me just a moment ago you know what would be a good trade if you know uh, you know for for later today in the event that the that the fomc is dovish okay uh, i'm assuming the euro dollar is going to continue to break out but the problem is that most everybody's expecting the, the FOMC to be pretty dovish at this point. So um, the question will be, are we going to be able to build on this this move higher? I mean, you have to keep in mind the 200-day moving average is not too far away, but uh, will it be enough to dislodge us from this nasty, low-volatility environment that we've been in for so long? I mean, you look at, since November, um, you know, we've been trading in the one – you know, 114.50 to 112 range for so long. It's like, you know, are do are we going to have the gusto to really, really break out here? I'm hoping so. Um, you know, I, I just want some volatility. I mean, that's all any of us traders want. We just want a little bit of volatility to to rear its head. But uh, right now, um, you know, it's it it's questionable. Now, if the if if the the Fed is unexpectedly hawkish um then you know you got to start looking at currencies like like the dollar canadian that gave us that false breakdown last night or yesterday i mean i'm gonna have to look at it as a possible long again if the if the if you know the dollar starts you know rallying um you know could we get a move uh you know above 133.70 and you know start completing this you know inverted head and shoulder pattern which i think is still valid um so it, you know, it's it, it's it's a hard it's hard to it's hard to gauge at this very moment, um, but I think that there are things to do if you're dollar bullish or you're dollar bearish, depending on 
you know how the how the how the uh, you know Fed comes across. If the Fed comes across, you know more dovish, then you know the the euro I think is a, is a is a nice squeeze candidate. Um, a lot of traders are shorting up against this trend line, shorting against the 78% retracement. I mean, we we could see a you know squeeze above 114, you know, maybe 114.20, and then then you know the the momentum, the squeeze momentum might start a little bit more here in uh, in this particular pair. I mean, I, I think that that's possible. Uh, I think the cable's off limits uh, for me, uh, and and probably for for most of you guys and gals right now. I mean, there's not what why are you going to trade the cable uh, at this moment? I I don't, you know. 130, 130, 60 is support in this wedge. We all know that 133.50 to 134 is resistance, and we're we're kind of we're right in the middle. I mean, we're just kind of nudged right in the middle here. So I, I don't think there's a good risk reward at all trading the cable right now, um, it, where where it's currently sitting. Okay, uh, the Aussie, you know the the Aussie. We do have Australia employment tonight, so bef you know if you do trade the Aussie dollar because you are bullish or bearish or whatever the case may be, uh, you know if the Fed if the Fed is more dovish and um, and you know the Aussie might be a, a decent play to the upside because if the if the Fed's more dovish, it's it's weak for the dollar period. And then you know you have a situation where risk appetite should continue to improve, right? On, on a more dovish um, uh, uh, FOMC. So then, then you know the Aussie dollar uh, to the upside might be a good play. The flip side to that is, if Australia or uh, excuse me, if the Fed is more uh, hawkish, okay. Then the Aussie might be a decent short because risk appetite is going to get, you know, it should get hurt, you know, if 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 the Fed is more more hawkish. So the Aussie dollar might be a good short. However, we do have Australia employment tonight. So if you look at uh, tonight, uh, which will be tomorrow morning in in Australia, but we have Australia employment data coming out at um, at at 17:30. Which is 5:30 this evening. Well, that's 5:30 for me, which would be 8:30 p.m. Eastern. So um, that that's the the one thing that you have to be careful about with the Aussie. Same with the Kiwi. Kiwi's a very similar situation. We're in this triangle pattern, um, you know. So you got to be a little careful uh, inside of this triangle. And we have New Zealand, uh, uh, New Zealand uh, GDP tonight, which might push us to the you know, uh, upper or lower end of this triangle, but I think you have to be a little bit more careful with the with the with the Aussie and the Kiwi today, just because that data is coming out a little bit later. So if you react, um, you know, after the data, after or excuse me, after the FOMC, and you just have to be a little bit more cautious if you're trading these. Remember, GDP comes out first in New Zealand. I think a couple hours before. Um, uh, Australian um, employment data. So, uh, if you're trading either one of those, just just keep that in mind. Uh, the Canadian, like if, if you're if you're tuning in a little bit late, I'll say, I'll say it again. Uh, I I got stopped out of the uh, dollar Canadian yesterday. I was very frustrated, but um, you know this is one of those things. If the Fed comes in hawkish today, which the market's not expecting, let's let's make sure that. You know, we're really clear on that. The market is not looking for a hawkish FOMC. Uh, the the market believes that the Fed's going to be pretty dovish today, and and that that's from every bank report that I've read for the most part. Um, if the Fed is 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 hawkish, the dollar Canadian could be a good play to the upside because the market would probably see some risk aversion. You know, when when you're talking about the equity market. So if the equity markets uh, slump a little bit. Uh, the dollar Canadian, after stopping out myself and other, you know, people that might have been on the long side here, that might be a, a decent play to the upside, especially if we break above like 133.70. All right, it's consolidated a lot overnight. Uh, the dips have been bought, uh, which suggests to me that that the market was probably, you know, the the market, you know, 
was probably caught short down here and so they've been you know they've been covering the last you know eight to eight to twelve hours or so all right um dollar peso the dollar peso is actually breaking down so we're breaking this multi-year trend line the only thing that's that would turn the corner right now for the dollar peso is some risk aversion uh, but right now the dollar peso is breaking down uh steve and grega both were uh bearish the the dollar max uh on real vision tv uh last week um when they were in new york they filmed it a uh, great call by them uh it continues to to drift lower here the the one thing that i'm going to caution you guys about uh the dollar mexican peso right now is the like the four hour relative strength is extremely oversold as we approach these supports D daily sentiment index is also um a little high it's not in extremes but it's pretty high so that that's always a risk of uh of 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 uh turning the peso the strength that we're seeing here also you got to keep in mind always when you're trading emerging market currencies if we if we get any type of risk aversion that'll turn the tide in these really fast okay um let's see the us dollar norwegian krona is not doing anything still bearish it's holding on a trend lows this is the uh uh, these are the trend lows right here. Stelio still has a nice little short in the US dollar Norwegian Krona. And I think if we break through uh, this low, then the 127% extension comes down to channel or uh, horizontal support down here, which I think is, you know, a realistic expectation for the US dollar Norwegian Krona, especially with the dovish Fed. Uh, US dollar Swedish Krona uh, is under pressure. Now, this is a this is a interesting chart. Let's go over to the daily chart. So once again, we've done this three times already. So you see the dollar Swedish Krona, this breakout point, we had stopped, retested it, rallied, stopped, retested it, rallied, false breakout up here thus far, we're retesting it. Now, uh, I think if the US dollar Swedish Krona breaks down, so let's say we have a dovish FOMC, then the US dollar Swedish Krona is a good short. Oh, wow. Hey, um, by the way, the, the cable's under a little bit of pressure. Theresa May is speaking. And watch this Euro pound because this Euro pound is starting to squeeze a little bit. We're starting to break out here. So um, that, uh, and, and I, I have to say, but instincts on your own yeah well you know the 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 risk is here that um you know again the risk is that you know you got you got a lot of people that have been kind of playing the pound to the upside you know yeah. thinking that there's going to be a you know nice um wow, they're, really they're dollar bears but they can't get bullish euro blake so uh cable was you know the uh the currency of choice to be bearish a dollar to me is what I think was happening. Yeah, yeah. They didn't yeah. want to be long euro because of, you know, just a, a bias on the euro and cables seem to be, you know, because the EG was performing. So you're a dollar bear, uh, what do you buy? Uh, and sterling uh, was, uh, you know, it set, shows up a little bit on the DSI, not as over, uh, not as bearish on the pound as on euro. That yeah. You me. Thank you. No, and 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 so you're you're right, and so everybody's you know been trying to play the pound. A lot of people have been looking for a favorable Brexit scenario, um, you know, thing that can really turn the tide, I guess, for the market is if uh, if if there's no extension here, and we end up getting a hard Brexit, which seems like the the market's kind of going, hey, wait a second, um, this might actually be the case, and if that is the case, then we're gonna you know we're gonna we we could see a, a possible downdraft in uh, in in um, in in equities too so keep that in mind and i was uh, I, I i did the chart of the day yesterday which was the dax and uh, i'll just pull up the chart really quick so we have this ascending wedge into this head and shoulder pattern neckline and now we're attacking the trend line support which we're coming really close to so you got to be a little careful here with the with the dax and with risk in general um you know, if the market starts to roll over here, that's, uh, you know, not, not just the DAX, but you got to, you know, watch the S&P after this prolonged uh, move higher in the S&P. Uh, the S&P hit the 127% extension. 
and you know we we come back below 2815, and uh, that's not going to be a it's not going to be a very bullish event for for equities. I, you know, and I, I think you got to be a little bit more careful with with uh, risk appetite. In, in that type of event, so yeah, the um, foreign bourses, Blake, are much weaker than the U.S. Uh, equity market. Uh, Nikkei, same type of thing. Uh, looks like, you know, even if we correct a bit here in the S&Ps, like say a uh, 38% of this recent run, yeah. some of these other exchanges look like they could take out, like the Nikkei, take out the low of the move that they made uh, in late 2018, early 2019. Yeah, so here and here's the Nikkei, and you're you're talking about the lack of recovery that that's yeah. seen, and and you can actually see that in the dollar yen as well. I mean, the dollar yen really isn't you know hasn't performed very well. Um, we've only retraced 50% of this move, where you know you take the S&P, we've retraced 78% of this move, or yeah, roughly over, it. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, over 78% of this move, uh, close to 88% actually. Let me, yeah, short the weak sisters. Yeah, so so if yeah, if, exactly. If we see some, if we see um, risk appetite rear its ugly head, then you got you know the DAX, you got the Nikkei, um, you, even the Russell 2000 is trading oh, a, a little bit heavier too. It's another good eye. Uh, that uh, failing to make a new high after that break from two weeks ago, where the Nasdaq blew it away, S and P's blew it away, uh, even the Dow did. Russell not. And remember last year before we peaked, uh, Blake, everyone was going into the Russell because it was like the safe trade from a trade war because there are domestic issues. And it topped before the Dow and S&P several weeks before and led the decline last year. Right, right, right. So, um, you know, it's uh, I, I think you got to, you know, keep an eye on some of these some of these markets that are, um, you know, underperforming. But, um, well, I'm going to, you know, speaking of which, I'll, I'll, I'll let Steve and Stelios cover the other markets so I don't take away all of their thunder oh, here. So. I have I have a lot of things to talk about. OK, no, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised I'm not, I never, I know, I never think you have <laughs> to talk about. So yeah, that's uh, one thing you never, ever, ever, Blake, have to not, worry not, about. Not with Steve. So, so good morning, Steve. Good morning, Stelios. Good morning, Blake. Before, before you go, um, uh, just some food for thought. I was thinking uh, about that yesterday, actually, at some point that I was contemplating. Uh, a lot of people are uh, paying very much importance to what the Fed has been doing by, in essence, using. Let's be honest. I mean, there is. I, I don't think there is anybody that is actually monitoring what's happening with the markets and isn't more or less convinced that the monetary policy uh, from the Fed is uh, at a huge extent based on on how assets are performing. Right. So everybody is, of course, focusing on, 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 let's call it the Powell put since, you know, we have Powell now. I think that what most are not thinking as a potential probability is Let's assume, Blake, that we do have a more hawkish Fed today. Okay, let's make that assumption. I think that that, in essence, will put something that we haven't had until uh, now so far, which is, in essence, also put a ceiling in the S&P. In essence, it will, it will put a collar to the index. Why? Because I think that if that happens, then the market is going to start thinking the following. Okay, yeah, they have a put in place because they... You know, the, the, the market recovery is, is based almost exclusively on asset price increases. But on the other hand, they want to they wanna normalize, let's say, the balance sheet and rates as long as the market permits uh, that. So when the market is going to be overperforming, they might be throwing in the mix, you know, um, a hike here and there or, you know, um, you know um, force them to keep the... Uh, you know, the tightening of the balance sheet, uh, you know, in place, et cetera. So I do think that, you know, today is going to be important because if the Fed actually signals that, you know, they might be turning more hawkish uh, after just, you know, the only thing that has in essence changed is, is the recovery in, in the stock markets, um, then that means that, you know, the upside might also be quite hard to get from this point on. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I uh, again, I I, I kind of think the market's right here. They're they're, they're not going to be hawkish. They're going to be a little bit more dovish. I agree. But I but, agree. but let's just you know, for our argument's sake, it would be. Uh, I think your 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 uh, your argument is valid. So, yeah, I like it. 
your points are valid actually all right well well good luck everybody and um too, and, and and steve you, uh, Stelios, i'll turn it over to you guys hey, and and don't forget to visit our sponsor uh forest park fx uh remember they are uh the reason why we make this or this webinar is available uh for you i know steve is a is a client of forest park fx and, happy client, um, I might add. Yeah, happy <laughs> client. He gets he gets uh, he gets some nice uh, you know kickbacks since he's already a Forex Analytics subscriber, obviously. So, <laughs> all right, <laughs> yep. all right, guys. When hey, did you join, uh, Steve? Have a good one. All right, Blake. <laughs> bye, bye, Blake. <laughs> you're you, you're a subscriber, huh? Good. Oh yeah, I am. Oh yeah, you, you have a little spin in the game here. I should, I should, I, I should, oh yeah, in, you mean in uh, Forex Analytics? Yeah, yeah, a little skin in the game. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing today? Um, I've been better, you know, little dude uh, had like, uh, you know, pain in the ear yesterday, so you know, he has otitis, oh. so we had to take care of that. And I have a little bit of a vertigo, I think it's because, you know, all the Traveling. fatigue from, from the yeah. trip, etc. you know, is hitting me now. Other than that, you know, everything is okay. Um, right, well, it'll be easier for you to reverse in the markets with vertigo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, you know, I have no complaint. I mean, my USD MSN is doing great. Uh, so I, I still have that position, though, still in the S&P. But really, I'm not I'm not worried about it. I mean, people keep keep asking me, you know, I have a have, have position and I'm totally fine with it. I do think that the upside is limited. Uh, Blake, uh, very uh, rightly so, pinpointed yesterday. If you remember, we had this conversation uh, even before I left. Uh, you know, I, I kept saying that this 11,800, 850 area here yeah. is a huge level for the DAX. Uh, and, you know, so far getting rejected from there. Also, the 200 daily moving averages there. I, I, I wrote all that as well in, in the um, end of week analysis. Uh, so I do think that, you know, this confluence resistance is going to be. Uh, key and so far the market seems to be getting rejected from there. That, that's um, funny. You know, Apple stalled. Almost looks like an identical chart, not as strong, but Apple stalled right at the 200 day. Here it is. As by well. the way, since you mentioned it, uh, yeah, here is here is Apple. Right around, uh, as you see. Right um, you know, I, I've been monitoring this rebound in the vast majority of stocks. Uh, so far, you know, it's channeled. Uh, yeah. I have no reason to believe that it's not correct for me. You know, there is a key. The, uh, I'm actually, uh, I like this key area here near the 61.8. Okay. You can see it was uh, previous resistance as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, let me remove this because we already completed that. 200 DMA is just a little bit higher. 50% right. FIB, 200 D, um, DMA just above this uh, resistance area and the 61.8. So I do think that the upside for Apple from this point on is going to start getting uh, tougher, tougher sliding so, head. Tougher yeah, sliding yeah, yeah, head yeah. here. Yeah, uh, ab absolutely, absolutely. So uh, yeah, I do think that we might get you know some sorting opportunity here. I'm not looking to be short up, just to make sh uh, sure that uh, you know I'm clear on that. I mean, um, I, I think there are better opportunities, but definitely uh, an area of interest. Uh, if if you if you for some reason uh, want to be short one of the stocks, and I'm deviating now a little bit. Um, but let me say that if you want to be short one of these tech stocks, there is no question in my mind that this move lower from NVIDIA after this huge parabolic move higher uh, has been impulsive in nature. So I do think that NVIDIA uh, is probably going to be underperforming. Uh, so I think you know that if you're looking for a NASDAQ stock to, uh, to short, NVIDIA is the one you should go with, currently testing resistance. Uh, as the you weakest see, recoveries of uh, all the exactly, stars. Exactly. As you see, as you see, oppositely from Apple, which is at the 50%, it hasn't even made it to the 38.2. Uh, so I do think that Nvidia is not really looking good. And uh, once the whole market rolls over, Nvidia is probably going to find it itself, you know, being the weakest uh, sister once again. But you know, anyhow, let's go back to you know our usual stuff because I think we have. Quite a lot of uh, things to talk about. I'm not going to go uh, over the USDMXN. You know my uh, thesis here. I think that the USDMXN can easily make it to 1860. Um, if you haven't seen the Real Vision interview, you can go ahead and do so. But we have a lot of things to talk about ahead of the Fed. 
Uh, first of all, let's start by the obvious. What is the dollar index doing ahead of the Fed? And the dollar index is clearly on a support area, right? I mean, this is the 50 daily moving average. This is also horizontal support resistance area. And it's also the support of this ascending uh, channel. So triple confluence of supports uh, for the dollar, key level here, uh, you know, make it or break it. So uh, we do get um, a dollar bull uh, bullish reaction uh, f following the FOMC. That's a great area uh, to be looking, you know, for another uh, move to the upside. But uh, if we end up cracking uh, below this area, I do think that uh, the next stop is going to be at 95.30. Uh, that's the next area of interest, and I do think that the index probably will make it there quite um, fast. So, uh, you know, it's 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 not uh, rare to see uh, ahead of major news, um, you know, major currency pairs or indices or whatever uh, being on key levels, and this is n uh, not the exception. So, DXY on a key level, and you know you know what to do from here i mean uh, you know we break lower i think there is going to be continuation we rebound from here uh, from a technical perspective that's going to be a perfect perfect level for the bulls uh, to see the index hold and be looking for a more upside now knowing that a big 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 part of the uh, index um, is the euro um, it's it's also not a coincidence that the euro is almost at this descending uh, trend line resistance. Uh, so, you know, the euro might turn lower if we see uh, dollar strength uh, from this level, which is going to keep it, uh, you know, for longer within this uh, larger formation. It's like a descending uh, wedge, like a descending triangle, but nobody tells us that, you know, we're about to break that. I mean, uh, you know, the euro has done a magnificent job staying, uh, in essence, more or less range bound uh, since nine months ago roughly and nobody you know nobody says that we can't do that for another month for another couple of months for another three months right so obviously um everything changes if we do see a daily close above this uh, horizontal resistance area and the 200 dma which is now here at 114.70 or uh if for some reason we crack uh, through the 61.8 of the uh, whole recovery, which is at 111.86. Um, so these are the key levels to, to monitor, in essence, a 300 pip range uh, from 111.80 uh, uh, to uh, 114.80, uh, roughly, uh, as long as we remain, uh, you know, um, trapped uh, in that formation, I would really not be looking to do something. Now, use the Swiss. Uh, which, you know, in a big extent is um, inversely correlated to uh, the euro USD. Um, a nice rejection from a previous high, exactly from a previous high. Uh, probably it was even to the PIP or, you know, almost to the PIP. Um, you know, as, as I had said, you know, this is a, this is a key um, formation to monitor. And I can draw it also here. Uh, why? Because this is going to determine uh, if this is going to be uh, a bullish or a bearish formation, right? So if we do crack above this uh, 102 area, I think there is a lot more upside uh, for the pair. But if we make it to 98.50 and we break below it, I think that then we can be talking about um, a formation that has run its course and is breaking the downside, in which case I would be looking for a sharp move lower uh, towards 94 cents, 94.50, if not uh, lower than that. Now, currently, we, we, we are in the middle of this formation, so I have to say that I'm not even close to uh, considering some trade here, but I know that a lot of people are watching it, so um, you know uh, that's why I wanted to give my um, point of view on this. Now, um, Blake already covered USD SEC. I had you know quite a lot of analysis on USD SEC, but you know it's exactly what I was looking for, so Blake covered that. Um, I don't think he went over the USD knock, so let me show this. USD knock also very, very close to an important level. Uh, you know, uh, make it or break it as well, um, simply because we are ve getting very, very close to this uh, trend line support. This is the trend line support of this ascending channel. As you see, um, uh, the market has been uh, in this ascending channel since the very first days um, of 2018. So. In essence, this is like uh, almost like a 15-month ascending channel, 
And obviously, you know, uh, w once you have a, a channel that the market respects for so long and you get a breakdown from there, uh, you know, it's, it's something that you should pay attention to. Uh, I wouldn't be jumping the gun on the short side and there is only one reason I wouldn't be doing that immediately because even if we break lower from here, there is a very key confluence of supports at 840. 840 has been a key area uh, several times in the past, but um, it's also uh, currently uh, the um, trend line resistance currently acting as support from this huge corrective formation um, and the 200 daily moving average. So if we do crack this ascending channel, I would still be holding off until I see what happens from 840. But if this market breaks through 840 as well, I think then we can be talking about uh, some, you know, some big development here. Um, until that happens, you need to respect the possibility of more upside because, as I said, we've been in an uptrend for 15 months. And, you know, it's, I mean, even if you followed Stelios's beautiful short position pattern in play, um, I think that ahead of the uh, FOMC and ahead of some crude um, uh, inventory data that we have uh, later in the day, taking some profits here is a very, very good idea. I would definitely take 50% off um, and wait to see what's going to happen, uh, you know, following today's. That's exactly um, what I've done. Uh, what I've done, and I've, I've told the chat room as well. So good, yes. good. Thank you. I think it's I think it's perfect land handling. Adding to that, adding to that, uh, because we know how correlated it is to the USD knock. I have to say that um, we don't have a determined um, development yet, but we start seeing some signals in the crude market that would be quite worrying for the bulls being that if today we close negative, we are in danger of forming an evening star formation on the daily charts after touching the 50% FIB. And if you go to the weekly chart and yeah. you, you look at this trend line that I have here in red, you'll With see that- With a potential that, reversal week to the downside if it fails Yes, here. exactly, exactly. You'll see, that if uh, this week ends up being a bad week for crude, we're going to end up having a very uh, ugly candle on a very nice confluence of resistances. Also, codes. Let but me I, add. Man. Look at look at the weekly RSI yeah. trend line, which is also uh, currently acting as resistance uh, on the RSI level. So and you have divergences uh, on the one and four hour chart. So yes. the shorter term stuff is not confirming the recent push. Uh, I was looking for one more, always looking for one more jiggle, but that could have been it yesterday. So if yes. you look at regardless, the, as I yeah. said, not, not enough evidence to call it yet, yeah. but definitely enough evidence to turn you a little bit cautious uh, about what's happening here with the crude market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've we've satisfied anyhow one final thrust out of this triangle uh, right out of this uh, symmetrical triangle uh, so anyway I look at it and if you remember I mentioned that a couple of days ago as well uh, on Monday I said that listen uh, you know crude might uh, might as well you know uh, move higher towards 60 but definitely um, I think you should be very very careful because we've already completed quite a lot of the objectives of this rebound and you know this market is in danger of uh, rolling over sooner um, rather than later. So combining that with the position of USD knock and also uh, with uh, what happened here in the USD card, if you remember on Monday, I was quite clear that, uh, you know, we have two possible interpretations with the USD card. One of them is that this was a triangle uh, that broke to the upside, in which case we might have just retested it and move higher. The other one that this is might be a channel and we might have one more move uh, lower uh, intraday. And that's why I don't like to, to trade, you know, based on what happens intraday. As, as Blake said, we did have this uh, move lower that penetrated through this uh, triangles uh, resistance that, you know, had acted multiple times as support during the past few days. But on a daily closing basis, we never actually violated this uh, trend line. So. If we do see some uh, US dollar strength following today's FOMC, 
This is also, as we said with the NOC, uh, with the USD NOC, this is also a great level for the USD CAD to uh, rebound from. So, you know, this is another pair that you need to watch because it is uh, actually um, uh, sitting on a, on a key level uh, ahead of the news. Um, now, having to do with the cable, I think that uh, Blake showed this. I, I lost the first few minutes of uh, the show, but regardless, there is a bearish interpretation about the cable and has to do with uh, this uh, formation, which can be uh, like a wedge. Uh, we did get rejected here from the confluence of the 50% FIB and this uh, wedge's resistance. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens if we actually move lower towards uh, this area, because if we do break below, I'm, I'm definitely going to be uh, looking for a continuation lower. Now, until that happens, I, I would still... Uh, favor staying away from it but you know i know that a lot of you um are actually watching it closely so you know i'm i'm going to mention uh, what i'm seeing regardless and irrespective of if, if i'm actually looking to trade it or not uh i'm you're going to seeing... cover gold uh we're getting some yeah. questions on gold yeah that, that i'm seeing that's 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 what i was about to say well, i'm seeing that we have some questions okay. uh, on gold and unfortunately they haven't I think they haven't, let me see. Uh, they haven't yet, they had a lot of things in the pipeline. They haven't yet published, I think my, yeah, they haven't yet published my other interview uh, about gold. Uh, I hope they're gonna do soon. Um, having to do with gold, I'm, I'm viewing this rebound as corrective. Even if this move lower proves to be corrective itself, I think it's missing one leg. So I'm viewing this move corrective. Um, so I do think that uh, there is a high chance for a rejection, um, at, you know, either from the 50% FIB or the 61.8% FIB and another leg to the downside. But we need to see, um, uh, you know, if, if that's going to take place. I still favor it, though. I still think that from a technical perspective, it's a very high probability scenario. So I, I still like gold to the downside and the same deal with silver. Actually, silver, as you see, is even underperforming in this rebound what gold yeah. has been doing. Uh, so probably once again, the case that silver is a preferred short if you're looking to be uh, short um, because both of them uh, seem to be bounding, uh, you know, um, in a manner that's, that's definitely uh, not impulsive. Palladium on resistance as well. You know, we've we've gone over it multiple wow. times. What yeah, a... I mean, it's, it's it's a beast. I mean, you know, they've been cornering this market for quite a long uh, time now, and you know, it is what it is. Uh, platinum stuck still in this uh, channel so far. Nothing impulsive in that. So, uh, you know, it remains one of the uh, weakest uh, metals. Um, so I think. Do you that, know anything you know, about the use of palladium? Is it mainly for catalytic converters, Steve? I know you're a car guy. Is in in a it? big extent, yeah. In a big oh. extent, yes. Stellium palladium okay. is used for for but for, for what isn't else? That, isn't that platinum? Uh, it is, used to be, palladium? but plat platinum was so expensive. I think they went to palladium. Yeah, yeah okay, palladium, yeah, right. palladium is twice right. more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, palladium. I, I, Palladium is actually now the most expensive of, of the metals, right? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. at 600, so uh, palladium is, is is the most expensive at the moment. I mean, it's yeah, more yeah. expensive I, than gold. Than I gold. Think if I told you that the, other, the other main uses is uh, like electronics technology and, uh, uh, you know, I think photography as well, there is some some use of it, but ba in ba mainly in, um, you know, catalysts is, is okay. the main use still, yeah. Thank you. Um, I have to check. I have to check. Uh, a little fondies here. A little fondies on the metal. Speaking, speaking of which, uh, you know, we have to definitely cover the bonds, uh, the bonds, both bonds and the treasuries ahead of uh, the FOMC. So uh, having to do with the bonds, we did have a pullback. We're currently um, testing horizontal support area, uh, quite, you know, quite an important one. Although even if we move a little bit lower, we still have this uh, you know, a corrective channel that we can retest as support. So, uh, you know, as long as we stay above it, I have to remain uh, bullish. I mean, I have to maintain a bullish bias for the boons. Now, having to do with the treasuries, and this is one thing uh, I definitely wanted to show, um, having to do with the treasuries, the treasuries are still pushing higher. 
And this is something I wanted to mention yesterday, but unfortunately, uh, I couldn't make it uh, yesterday being here. I was extremely busy. Um, it's actually what is, um, what is definitely astonishing is the divergence we, we have between uh, treasuries or if you want yields, if we want to have a direct correlation between yields and uh, risk. So yeah, taking as the benchmark for risk, which is considered the, best, the benchmark, the S&P, and overlaying it here, as you see, overlaying it with the yields, you can see that we have some astonishing divergence. Let me mark it. You see it between what the yields have been doing and what the index has been doing, right? What, what the vast majority of stock indices have been doing. I am 100% convinced that this cannot go on for longer. So you can have a debate about what's about to give. In my opinion, this is what's about to give the S&P. Uh, but this divergence has definitely uh, to close, you know, it has to close uh, sooner rather than later. So this is another thing I'm monitoring and I wanted to show yesterday. Uh, anyhow, nothing has really changed since yesterday, so it's still valid. Um, I, I think it's it's worth paying attention, especially ahead of the Fed, because the Fed definitely has, um, you know, the potential of um, moving a risk along with everything that's dollar denominated. Okay. Uh, let me see more questions. Can you go over, compare EURUSD implied volatility with the 25 delta risk reversal? Does it imply prices should head higher? I would, Ben, I'm not sure if you're in the chat room. I would love to go over that on the chat room, but I, I think it's, you know, it's quite specific and, you know, hard topic for the vast majority of the people to comprehend. So, I, you know, I have no problem going over that kind of stuff on the chat room if, if you're a Forex Analytics subscriber. Uh, please tell about crude and gold already done. Hey, Steve, look at the potential head and shoulders pattern on Google Weekly. Okay, sure. I mean, we can have a, a fast look on the Google um, alphabet. It's Google. Here it is. Uh, I know that this is the daily, but we're also going to go on the weekly. Yeah, I know what you mean. You can see it even on the, on the daily. Yes, it is a potential head and shoulders formation. If anybody can't already see it, this is what our friend is talking about, right? Uh, but as always, a head and shoulders pattern to be a head and shoulders pattern, we need to see um, a rejection sooner rather than later and a move lower towards 1,000 because we have a very clearly defined uh, neckline, if that's the case, and that's you know also a very nice psychological round number, 1,000. Uh, so you think we might get a right over here now? Okay. So yeah, if we do make it down to 1,000, the year, then yes, I believe that from a technical perspective, that's going to be a beautiful head and shoulders formation. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Google actually got fined for $1.49 billion today, I think, or at least I read it in the Financial Times today. Now, it might have happened yesterday. Uh, you know, I didn't notice if it was like totally fresh news or like 24-hour news uh, from um, the European Union. Uh, so, uh, so we might see, uh, due to that, uh, some kind of a gap lower today, uh, if indeed that's today's news. Uh, of course, that's far away from saying that we're going to move down to 1,000. I'm just, you know, since we're looking at Google, I'm mentioning that as, a, as an yeah. interesting piece of news. Look, um, at, uh, Microsoft has really been uh, the market that led it. You know the strength, and it's uh, maybe you could take yeah, a look at it, Steve. It's looking it, a little heavy it, to me, short if, term. If you remember, coach, if you remember, coach, a long time ago, I mentioned Microsoft as as right. one of the markets in uh, in the tech sector that was actually holding much better than anything else. I remember specifically that I had mentioned that the only stock back then that looked really corrective to me because many of the rest of the tech stocks uh, looked. Yeah, we're broken, uh, yeah. but one that really looked corrective was uh, Microsoft, and indeed Microsoft did make it. This is actually what we drew back then, quite you know, you know, nice. I probably was like a month ago that it looked to me like Microsoft wanted to break higher, 
and push to new highs. And indeed, Microsoft is at all-time highs. Uh, but I would be very, very careful because I think that this Look at that daily divergence. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Plus, keep in mind that usually you get a bigger correction before the last leg, leg higher. So Looks potential like drive target... two, Steve, when we, I had it compressed. Yeah. This is drive two, drive one was the uh, September last year. Potential targets here are, there they are, these ones. As you see, the extensions of this correction, 127% extension at 122 uh 161.8 at 130 so i would really yeah. uh not be surprised if we we've already satisfied the minimum requirement of one more high let me say that so theoretically speaking we can roll over from anywhere but ideally i would want that to be from a you know fib extension so the first important one is at 122 uh now if we get like a big reversal from anywhere there i would be looking for more weakness following that uh, don't forget that Microsoft had had what we drew a long time ago, had had a parabolic move higher, which came to an end, uh, you know, when everything started breaking down. Uh, and I do think that this move higher might be the last hurrah of this market. Uh, so despite being two all-time highs, I would be quite careful. I would definitely not be buying it here. Uh, I would be buying it on, on the initial breakout or at the retest, because as you see, this market acted perfectly. I mean, it broke out, it retested this formation and moved higher. Let me say here that it has been um, noticed multiple times uh, from a technical perspective, when you when you get a market retesting the breakout area or the breakout trend line, depends on you know what kind of formation you have, the implied performance following that is reduced, right? So uh, as we saw with Palladium, very very strong markets when they break out they don't retest okay so um having a retest uh, gives you an excellent risk reward opportunity to join a market but on the other hand it has been proven that a market offering a retest is not going to perform that strongly than a market that actually never offers you the opportunity to enter from a retest okay so keep that in mind since we're uh, talking about the potential of seeing some kind of a top um in uh, microsoft being not that far away from uh, where we currently are of course potentially it can be even at 130 which isn't <laughs> that close but as i said 122 might even uh do it um let me see if we have more questions uh, also steve uh is uh who i'm interviewing from at underscore peculium in the house and will you please uh, write something so i could find you Say hello, Dale. I'm here. We have uh, we have Zach asking um, about EuroSwiss. What I have to say is that nothing has changed with EuroSwiss. Uh, EuroSwiss is very, he's trading at a very you know in a very technical way. So currently it remains trapped between this horizontal support area, you know, roughly at 112, and this horizontal resistance area roughly at 114.50. I think that as long as we remain below between them there is not much to do here and you know even the fact that the 200 and the 50 dmas have converged that much so that this market in essence is range bound right when you have like a slow and the and the rather fast moving averages converge you know that's a good sign and especially when they when they've started going horizontal as well which we have both of those uh, happening here in this market it's another indication i mean um you know an easy to to recognize indication that this is a market that uh, uh isn't in a rush to go anywhere uh and probably uh if you want to do something with a market like this it's range traded than anything else okay uh so i have nothing to add for the euro space uh we have also a question about nifty and nifty banks i, I have no, no absolutely no problem looking at that and if your guest is here, I think we can go uh, to that afterwards. I have to say that Nifty has, has surprised me to the upside, I mean, quite a lot, because up to this point, uh, this formation looked, you know, strongly corrected to me. So I really expected one more thrust lower towards this horizontal support area. Uh, and, you know, once we started breaking down, and uh, we then reversed and, you know, it's it's been quite strong. So I have to say that, you know, it's, 
it's uh, it's a market that might soon pull back because daily RSI has almost made it to 80. Uh, but I have to say that you know the bearish interpretations have already started looking uh, a lot less likely than they were looking when we were actually developing this ascending wedge. Um, so you know a retest of the highs is <laughs> is definitely not unlikely. Uh, and Bank Nifty. There you go. Ah, Bank Nifty usually looks more or less the same. No, actually, it looks better. You know, all-time uh, highs here. Uh, so, you know, you have to respect that and look for upside targets by having some extensions here. As you see, uh, we've already surpassed the 127% extension. Next area of real interest, in my opinion, the 161.8% extension of this last corrective move, which is at roughly at 31,000. Now, obviously here as well, the daily RSI is almost at 85. So buying right here right now makes no sense. Uh, but, you know, a retest of the previous highs at 28,400, uh, probably the, is something that the market is going to um, uh, see as a nice buying opportunity. So I'm guessing that a lot of people are going to be jumping on uh, the index at that <coughs> level. Coach, uh, do we have uh, your guest here? Uh, let me uh, try this one more time. Uh, whoever is representing at Peculium, which is a savings platform for crypto, artificial intelligence, etc., can you please write something in the question box? Let me also cover you as this sec for a friend that just asked. Sure, go ahead. As, as long as you're looking. Use this sec. This is this is what I'm looking for. First of all, we we had that long-term triangle. I was very bullish because it was an obvious triangle, so I expected a continuation higher. But we are now at a key area as well here. I mean, we're testing a key area ahead of the FOMC because, as you see, after finding uh, a high, um, we've de we've actually developed uh, an an um, expanding uh, triangle, or otherwise, as it's called, a megaphone formation. We're currently testing horizontal support area. You can see this area of support has been, uh, this area has been support and resistance multiple times in the past. Uh, but you know, one way or another, uh, you don't want to see a move below this area. So, uh, you know, as long as we stay above this triangle, there is still the potential. I mean, we can see a little bit more downside. But if we make it below this triangle, then we we will be talking about you know a major failure after one la last thrust higher and very often triangles are um, continuation patterns that produce just one more high or one more low before a big reversal. So that's what I have in mind that worries me for the upside. But from a risk reward perspective, if you if you want to be looking higher, I think that the way I would approach it if I was looking for a trade here, it would be buying half a, half a position here at this horizontal support ahead of the FOMC. If we make it lower, buying another half uh, just here at the triangle, and then you'll have a nice entry, average entry, which is going to be here, an, uh, an average position here, and a nice risk-reward opportunity, because if you get more upside from there, fine. But if you then see a move below, um, or a daily close below this triangle, or you know several daily closes below this triangle, I think we can be talking about a, 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 you know, a bigger... Um, uh, a reversal. Until that happens, you need to respect the upside, as I said. Uh, so, Coach? Looks like we have a mix-up, Steve. So, uh, it doesn't look like there'll be an interview today. Uh, I okay. do. We do have we do have Mark Chandler tomorrow. Mark's one of my favorite guests, and what a great time to have him after the Fed for absolutely his fundamental views and technical views of Euro and all the majors. So, Mark tomorrow and wrap up the week with a guy who's very popular in the crypto space, uh, Crypto Don Alt. So nothing today, but I just want to remind everyone who's here, first of all, Steve, great to have you back. Your reviews are, you know, the best in the business. So I uh, just want to remind everyone as they're leaving here today that it's now or never for Post. you to subscribe. Yeah, but <laughs> before the thing, <laughs> let me satisfy a friend here that uh, oh, okay. actually, yeah, actually, right. actually uh, huh? um, nice, nice to see you, Forex Gal. We actually met in the expo. Oh, 
Wow. Yeah, very, a very lovely lady. Uh, we had a couple of conversations. Um, um, I just noticed that uh, you were the one asking about USD SEC. Um, and we have a question about USD INR. Let me say uh, about USD INR um, that so far we might just be in a corrective move lower. Um, there are two possible interpretations. One that this is a channel. Uh, the other one that this is just, uh, you know, a pennant. Uh, so, you know, I have both trend line supports uh, here. Um, keep in mind the reason why I'm looking at this initially as a corrective uh, pattern is because I'm forced to, meaning this has been a very prolonged uptrend. So whenever you have a very prolonged uptrend or a very prolonged downtrend, you are forced to view uh, any counter trend move as corrective initially. So uh, that means that I would be a little bit careful because if we find support at this trend line or at that trend line, don't forget that in between them, we also have the 61.8 of the last leg um, higher. Uh, I think you should respect the potential that we, we're going to have more upside. So uh, I would definitely not be selling USD INR here. Uh, it has definitely shown, um, you know, some, some, you know, respectable pullback. I mean, we've made it from the... 74.50 down to, uh, what is it, like roughly 68 and a half. Um, but I would be quite careful here because, you know, we're approaching several uh, areas of interest for a continuation higher. So thank you all very much. Uh, Do we'll the tagline. Do the tagline. Here buddy. tomorrow. Which one of all? You know, the Don't tag. just count your, <laughs> count your blessings. Good job. Okay, everyone. Good hunting oh, on the okay. Fed. Uh, see everyone in the chat room. So as a member, you're in the chat room for the Fed with Steve and Blake and and Amanda and Joe and all the members, all the pros in there. So good hunting on the Fed. And we'll see everyone tomorrow. Mark Chandler is my guest. And uh, thank you, Alexandro, Selena. You're very welcome. Uh, have a great day and see everyone tomorrow. Thank you, Steve. Adios. And as Steve said, remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And uh, you as part of our community, I count as one big one. Adios. Let's have a great spring, new growth in our accounts this season. Amen.